welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. In particular, I want to thank... Lewis, who supported the show on the website over at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also become an ongoing contributor at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now we turn to today's episode of Richard Diamond. The original air date is December the 3rd, 1949, and it's the Leland L. Leeds case. Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Oh, good evening, Mr. Diamond. Evening, Francis. You look like you're going out. Yes, sir. Miss Asher wants me to go down to the delicatessen for some cold cuts. Oh, where is Miss Asher? In the study, sir. Well, I'll see you later, Francis. Why don't you bring back some roll mop? Roll mop, sir? Herring with the bends. Very toothy. Uh, yes, sir. Ali, Ali, oxen free. Rick. Hi. Hi. Well, get the silk thing there. Lounging pajamas. Yeah. I guess we're going to stay in, huh? Uh-huh. I just sent Francis out for some food. I uh, met him at the door. Look, I've got to do a few things in the kitchen. Why don't you stretch out on the couch and take it easy until dinner's ready? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm pretty tired. Might rock out. No, a little sleep might do you some good. Here, read a magazine if you want to stay awake. Hmm? Oh, swell. Gory detective. Who sends you these things? The corpse of the month? Mm, pretty bad. I won't be long. Okay. Oh, no. The case of the bloody... Oh. <sighs> it was going on 11 o'clock, and the fog encircled the old house like a thin, wet blanket. Oh, swell. The figure of a man crept stealthily across the gravel of the garden path. Oh, these riders really dream it up. Hmm? Hmm? Mr. Diamond? What? How did you get in here? I followed you from your office. Shh! You left the door unlocked when you came in. Well, now, look... I know I shouldn't have come into someone else's house, but, but this is a matter of life and death. Hey, stop pulling down the blinds. I don't want anyone to see us talking. Well, you're on the eighth floor. Who's chasing you? A herd of monkeys? Please. Please, you must listen. Now, look, if you got troubles, come to my office in the morning. Tomorrow morning may be too late. I'm supposed to die tonight. Try, try breathing. You expand your chest. Take a lung full of air. No, no, I... Yeah, it does wonders. Keeps you around for days. You better get out of here. Please, Mr. Diamond, don't give me away. Please. Uh, yeah, baby. Uh, wait a minute. they are talking at the desk. Oh, bless you, Mr. Diamond. I thought I heard you talking to someone. Talking? Oh, no, no. Must have been reading out loud. This is swell literature. Mm. The case of the grisly ghost. Oh, fine. I like to keep up on the exploits of a private detective. You don't tell me anything about your cases. Oh, I'm modest. Hey, you got your coat on. Where are you going? Oh, Francis just called. He's had a flat tire. I'm going to pick him up in the other car. Uh, don't you want me to do it? Oh, I'm not going to let you out of this house. I'll be right back. Okay. Read the grisly ghost. It's not bad. Bye, baby. Bye. Okay, Spider-Man, you can come out now. Oh, thank you. Now, what the devil's going on? I told you my life's in danger. I need help. Tell me about it. I haven't time now. Come to this address in about an hour. My name's Leeds. Leland L. Leeds. Oh, for Pete's sake. I must get back before they miss me. I don't want them to know I got out. Say I called you and told you to come over. Here's the address on this card. Please don't fail me, Mr. Diamond. Now, wait a minute. My fee's a hundred a day in expenses. Of course, of course. I'll have a check for you. Goodbye. <laughs> He went out like an undertaker stealing a can of embalming fluid. And I poured myself something just about as strong. Helen would scalp me for leaving, but for some reason, nutty little guys like that interest me. 
I left Helen the note saying I'd be back later and took off to the address Leland L. Leeds had given me. It was out of town about ten miles, but after hunting around for a while and running up a good-sized taxi fare, I finally found the house. Yes? Uh, uh, yes. I, I, I got a call from a Mr. Leeds at this address. He asked me to come over. My brother? I don't know. Well, it couldn't have been. He's very sick. He's upstairs sleeping. Well, he was just coasting off to Dreamland when he called me. I, uh, I think you'd better let me in. Oh, a detective. All right. Just, uh, what did my brother tell you, Mr.? Uh, Diamond. He said his life was in danger. I'm Nina Leeds. I think you'd better come into the living room, Mr. Diamond. Dr. Miller can explain things better than I can. Uh, sure. Roger? Mm hmm? This is Mr. Diamond. He's a detective. Oh. Lee just called him. This is Dr. Miller, Mr. Diamond. Hello, Doctor. How do you do? Are you from the police? No, no. Private stuff. Oh, I see. Oh, Mr. Diamond, I'm afraid you made a trip for nothing. Oh, here are the drinks. Uh... Oh. George, uh, this is Mr. Diamond. He's a private detective. What? Mr. Diamond, this is George Brodine. How are you? Well, fine, thank you. Anything wrong? I don't know. Lee phoned Mr. Diamond and told him he was in danger. How did you know that, Doctor? I told Miss Leeds what he said, but not you. I'm Mr. Leeds' doctor. He's having a nervous breakdown and suffers from an extreme persecution complex. If he called a detective, I'm sure he must have said something like that. That's quite correct, Mr. Diamond. What do you do, Mr. Brodine? Why, I'm with the New York Museum. I'm a friend of the family. I've been watching Lee break up for the past month. Mm Mm-hmm. May I talk to your brother, Miss Leeds? I don't think you can. I gave him a very strong sedative. Let me get you a drink, Mr. Diamond. When Lee wakes up, you can talk to him. Sure. We went into the bar and she got out a big bottle and two glasses. I forgot all about Leland L. Leeds for a while and started uh, concentrating on his lovely sister. It was easy. Champagne? Uh, Sure, but I've run out of slippers. I've got a small foot. Might take you a long time to get enough. I drink fast. It's the open toes that bother me. I like the patter. Where'd you come from? Same place you did, lover. Experience Alley. What do people call you after they get to know you better? Oh, different things at different times. For now, you can call me Rick. And later? Oh, you'll think of something easier. It's like that when you haven't got much time to talk. Here's to later, Rick. Uh, yeah. What does a doctor specialize in? Roger's a brain specialist. Mental disorders, mostly. (coughs) It's Lee. He's off again. (coughs) Maybe he's been listening to Sam Spade. Come on. You'd better stay down here, Nina. I'll take care of it. I'm going up. Lee needs me. Uh, George, get my bag. It's in the hall. All right. You'd better not come in, Mr. Diamond. I think I'd better. <laughs> Nina! Nina! Lee, what is it? I saw the blood again. Oh, Mr. Diamond, I'm glad you came. Now, calm down, Lee. Everything's going to be all right. Get away from me. He thinks I'm insane. You all do. You want my idol and you stop at nothing. Now, there's no sense in this much self-indulgence. Uh, here's not... your bag, Roger. Thanks. What are you going to do? Just give you something to make you sleep. I don't want to sleep. I'll wake up and see the blood again. There's no blood. It's just your imagination. You're overwrought. You think I'm crazy. But I saw it. I tell you, I saw it. Now, this won't hurt. No, I... I, I don't want to sleep. Please, Mr. Diamond, help me. Lee, do what Roger tells you for my sake. Come on, come on, come on. The injection should take over. I'll get up. Just a minute. I, I won't go to sleep. Lee, please. Then leave Mr. Diamond with me. I want to talk to him. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Don't stay too long, Mr. Diamond. I want him to rest. Okay, doctor. Remember, he's not at all rational. Come on, Nina. I'll see you downstairs, Mr. Diamond. Hey, what's the idea, Leeds? I, I'm locking the door. I, I don't want anyone coming in. It, it, pardon me for walking around in circles. I, I've got to stay awake. Uh-huh. Those people downstairs are trying to drive me crazy. They must have been working overtime. They're after my idol. Your what? My idol. That carved image standing on the night table. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Here. Here, look at it. Look at it. Well, that's dandy. How many box tops did you have to save? Mr. Diamond, at this moment, you are holding $100,000 in your hand. I am? Last month, my grandfather passed on and left his entire estate to my sister and me. Among the effects was that idol. It was left to me. What is it, platinum? Oh, no. No, Mr. Diamond. That is the lost idol of King Tut. I always wondered what happened to it. Oh, oh then you know the legend. Well, uh, I'm a little, little hazy on it. Maybe you'd better bring me up to date. Oh, of course, of course. It was supposed to have been buried with King Tut. However, the story goes that a slave absconded with it before they sealed the tomb. And that makes it worth 100000 I guess so. Uh, you guess. You don't know? I only know what my grandfather told me before he passed on. 
He told me its value and said there was a curse on it. Uh, what does it say? Crime doesn't pay? Well, Mr. Diamond, it seems that on the first night of the new moon, after one has gained possession of the idol, he will die. Next week, Tom Swift and his electric grandmother. You don't believe me. Oh, sure. No, you don't. You're just like the rest. But it may interest you, Mr. Diamond, to know that one month after the idol was uncovered and my grandfather gained possession, he died. It was a new moon. How old was he? Seventy-four. Oh, well, that couldn't be it. Now relax and tell me why you came to me. What about your fee? Oh, forget it. You can just buy me a broom to ride around on. Good night, Mr. Leeds. Remember, Mr. Diamond, it's a new moon. You don't have much time. Oh, brother. Did you talk to her, Mr. Diamond? Uh, you might call it that. Now do you understand? Your point's well taken, Doctor. What about that hunk of stone? Maybe if you gave him a teddy bear? Oh, the idol he's got is absolutely worthless. His grandfather had the same unusual ideas about it. Is there such an idol? Well, oh, there's a legend, but no one has ever found even the slightest clue that it's a fact. Now, I've examined Lee's idol, and it's certainly not worth more, oh, any more than the granite it's carved from. Hmm. Well, I'll be saying good night. I hope he gets better. Can't I get you another drink, Mr. Diamond? You certainly deserve something for your trouble. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, goodbye, Doctor, Mr. Rodin. Thanks, Miss Leeds. I wish I could make this up to you. I'll uh, take a rain check. It'll be raining a lot this month. Uh, yeah. Well, good night, Miss Leeds. Good night. I went out and got a cab. As far as I was concerned, the frightened little man in the nightshirt was going to end up modeling straitjackets, and the private detective would only add to the confusion. It was 8 o'clock, and I told the cabbie to take me to 975 Park Avenue. Helen would be angry, but it was worth going back to. A couple of hours with her could make a guy as contented as a bear that had just cornered the honey market. We pulled up in front of Helen's apartment, and I paid the cabbie. I was just going in when a small convertible skidded to a stop in front of the building. Mr. Diamond... Mr. Diamond! It was Leland L. Leeds again. And you could still see part of the nightshirt under his top coat. He leaned out of the car window and called. Over here, Mr. Diamond. Please, I must talk with you again. I'd had enough of the jumpy little man with the idol, so I started into the apartment without answering. He called again, climbed out of the car, and started to cross the street toward me. I looked back just in time to see the other car swing in toward me. I ran back into the street and looked after the disappearing car. The lights were off, and I couldn't get the license number. It was too far away. I leaned down by the little man in the nightshirt. He was pretty far away, too. He was dying in a hurry. Mr. Diamond? Yes, Leeds? Take the idol. When you left, I... I found out why it was worth all that money. They... They didn't want me to tell you, so... So they... They followed me and... And ran me, ran me down. It's... It's in my coat pocket. He died lying on his back in the street. Several people were coming out of the building, so I reached into his pocket and pulled out a chamois bag. I guess the idol was inside, so I put it in my coat and went in to call the police. Oh, Mr. Diamond, Miss Asher's been worried. Hello, Francis. Tell her I'm back and let me use the phone. Certainly, sir. She's upstairs. Is something wrong, sir? You look worried. Man got hit by a car. I've got to call the police. Oh, my goodness. Is he hurt badly? Bad enough to get buried. Oh, my goodness. Homicide, Sergeant Otis. Otis, let me talk to the lieutenant. Is this Diamond? No, it's the Beaver Boys. Now put the lieutenant on the phone. And what do you do with all those tired jokes? You can't keep using them. I give them away to idiots. Want to start a collection? Oh. Lieutenant Levinson. Walt, this is Diamond. I got a body for you. I go off duty in 20 minutes. Call back then. Lying out in front of Helen's apartment, 975 Park. Rick, my stomach is bothering me. Why can't you be a good boy and stay out of trouble? Take some soda and get over here. Take some soda? Every time you call, I end up taking enough to give an elephant the hiccups. Well, you're a fine one. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. I didn't know you were on the phone. Uh, wait a minute, Walt. 
Hello, baby. I'm talking to the lieutenant. Hmm. Aren't you afraid you'll catch cold in that thing? I'm mad at you. Oh, you're cute. Hey, what's going on? Uh, just Helen. If you could see her, your ulcers would start popping like chestnuts. Uh, say hello. Now, uh, the law sends you his greetings. Hello to the law. Uh, she says... I know, I heard it. Now, what about the stiff? His name's Leland L. Leeds. He got belted by a car. It was too far away to get the number. What makes you think it's a job for homicide? Get over here and Helen will give you the story. I've got some work to do. But uh, wait a minute, Rick. Oh, you're getting lazy. What's the matter? Don't you want to find out things for yourself? Rick, what happened? Francis told me some man got hit by a car. Right on your doorstep. Oh. Let's go to the other room, baby. I'll tell you all about it. We went into the warm study and Helen poured me a tall drink. I briefed her on what had happened earlier in the evening and she sat down next to me. There's something about red hair that does things to me. It smelled fresh and clean, and with her that close, I could have been sitting in the middle of the Arctic and still kept my temperature above 102. Rick, do you have to go back out there? Well, somebody's got to tell his sister, and in a way, I feel a little responsible. Are you going to give her the idol? Hmm? The idol. The thing you took from poor Mr. Leeds' coat. You could at least show me what I'm playing second fiddle to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I nearly forgot about it. Oh, here it is in this chamois bag. Oh, what an ugly little thing. And that's supposed to be worth all that money? Well, that was what leads, uh... Hey, something's missing. Yeah, one of the eyes. Must have come loose when the car hit him. Probably in the bag. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Rick! Yeah. It was painted over. You'd never guess it unless you pried it loose. It's as big as a marble. Is it real? Well, you've got enough of them around, you tell me. It is. Rick, I think it's the pigeon blood. Why, it's worth a fortune. What are you doing? I'm scratching the other one. Well, Mr. Leeds wasn't so squirrely after all. This is ridiculous. You only read about things like this. Two pigeon blood rubies. No wonder he thought it was worth $100,000. He said he found out tonight. He must have been scratching at them. Oh, then it wasn't just a hit and run. I don't know. Baby, I don't want to get hung up with a lot of explanation to Walt. Rick, what are you doing? Taking the other eye out. There. Now, now here. Hang on to these and don't let them get out of your little hot hand. When Walt gets up here, tell him what I've told you. Well, will you be back? An hour ago, I laughed at a little guy when he told me he was going to die. He said it was a full moon and he had a curse on him. I'm still a skeptic, but I'm a new boy when it comes to voodoo. I've got to hurry over there before the whole bunch of them turn into bats. <laughs> I went down in the service elevator and out on the street. The wagon was driving off with Leeds, and Walt and Otis were going into the building when I slipped up to the convertible and got in. Leeds had left the keys in the ignition like I figured, so I took off and headed across town. Twenty minutes later, on a lonely stretch of road, I started counting suspects. All three of them could be in on it. Dr. Miller, who said Leeds was insane. George Brodine, a man from the museum who said the idol was worthless. And that lovely sister... I didn't notice the car pulling up behind me until it was too late. It was doing a good 70, and as it swung around to pass me, the guy at the wheel cut in sharp and hit me broadside. Hey, look out! I went through a white fence and over an embankment. The car rolled, and somebody dropped the night on my head. I went to sleep. I don't know how long it was before I started coming around, but when I tried to shake myself back, it was like pulling my head out of a barrel of molasses. It stuck to my eyes and plugged up my ears. I tried to claw the stickiness away, but my hands were like two baseballs. I moved my shoulders and felt the stiffness in my back. It spread out to my hands and down to my feet. I opened my mouth and took in a lot of air. I finally made it. Someone was trying to get me from the highway, so I pulled myself clear of the wreck and started moving in a circle, keeping whoever it was at a good distance. I was too pushed around to put up a fight, so I made it back to the highway and walked along until I found a little gas station on the road. The joint ain't open. And then your lock's busted. No, it ain't. Then I floated through the wall. Where's your phone? It ain't for public use. Try isn't. Okay, wise guy, the joint isn't open. The phone isn't for public use. And you isn't so big you can't get tossed out on your face. And you isn't so wealthy, five bucks won't make a difference. Oh, 
Why didn't you say so? Phone's on the wall. Thanks. You know the Leeds family? Yeah, they get gas here sometimes. Hello. Evergreen 34369, operator. How far is the house from here? I'm a little turned around. About a half a mile. Hello, Francis? Is Lieutenant Levinson still there? No? I'll just tell him to get out to 19319 Jackson Heights Boulevard. I've got a killer for him. Yeah, oh my goodness. Now hurry it up. You a cop? Shamus. What do you take for the use of your car for an hour? My wife would kill me. I'll drive you wherever you want to go. He gave me a lift in his old sedan, and ten minutes later I was ringing the doorbell to the Leeds house. I was glad the girl answered. She made me feel better right away. Oh, Mr. Diamond, come in. Oh, thank you. Where are your friends? Raj and George. They went out to look for my brother. He disappeared right after you left. I'm terribly worried. Oh, uh, have you got that drink? I could use it now. Certainly. I don't know why Lee ran off like that. He shouldn't have been driving in his condition. Were Roger and George together when they left to look for Lee? No, they took separate cars. Why? Has something happened, Mr. Diamond? Have you heard from my brother? I guess I'd better give it to you straight. Your brother's dead, Miss Leeds. I'm sorry. Dead? Oh, no. He was hit by a car. It's all because of that horrible idol. That stupid, horrible idol. If my grandfather hadn't told Lee it was worth that much money, this never would have happened. Did you think it was worth anything? No, of course not. But we couldn't convince Lee. Now he's dead. <laughs> would you please answer that, Mr. Diamond? Sure. You take it easy. <laughs> Nina, I... Oh, what are you doing here, Diamond? Did you find Lee? Why, no, no, I didn't. I've gone to every place I thought he could possibly be. I even looked up your address one over there, but the building was closed. You better go in and see Miss Leeds, Doc. She's pretty upset. Upset? Nina, what's wrong? Oh, Raj, it's Lee. He's been killed. What? That's right. But how did it happen? Bingo. I'll tell you as soon as I let Mr. Brodine in. There, there, Nina. Just put yourself on the line. Please. Come in, Mr. Brodine. Well, Mr. Diamond, what are you doing here? I think I'd better have a sign made. The doctor and Miss Leeds are in the living room. Has something happened? Mr. Leeds is dead. What? This is the most surprised household I've ever run into. Roger, is this true? I guess so. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Nina. Is there anything I can do? No. No, thank you. Where did this happen, Mr. Diamond? In front of 975 Park Avenue. Car hit him. I was with him when he died. Oh, this is terrible. I thought at first it was an accident, but I'm not sure. What do you mean? When I left to come out here, someone ran me off the road, nearly killed me. Who would want to kill Lee and then try to kill you? <laughs> probably a coincidence. Certainly, certainly. Probably just a drunk. Could have been. Lee gave me this before he died. A chamois bag. What's in it? The idol. Well, that awful thing. What do you want done with it, Miss Leeds? I don't care. Just get it out of this house. What are you going to do? I don't know. You want the thing, Doctor? Why, what for? That's a good question. How about you, Brodine? You want it? Oh, well, what would I want a worthless piece of stone for? Well, as long as no one wants it, may I use this fire poker, Miss Leeds? What are you going to do with it? The idol is worthless. It's caused a lot of trouble for you and your family. I'm going to break it up. No! Give me that, George! Well, Brodine, you're sure getting grabby. All right, now all of you stay right where you are. Well, for a museum collector, that's a pretty modern gun. Yes, and I know how to use it. George! This is the hokiest case I've ever been on. Even the dialogue's bad. I suppose you think you're pretty clever making me show my hand like that. I read Gory Detective. I found that the idol was really worth all that money, but I had to make the killer tip himself. You did. Mr. Diamond, do you mean my brother was really right all along? In a way, yes. He believed what his grandfather had told him. But it wasn't until tonight when he scratched one of the eyes of the idol that he knew for sure. Scratched one of the eyes? That's right. Pigeon blood rubies, painted over. Well, now I'm leaving you. Well, that's good, but you're minus something. Minus what? A couple of rubies. I took them out of the idol. You're lying. Take a look at the bag. What? They're gone. I'll kill you for this. Give me the gun, George. Look out. He's going to shoot. Give me the gun. All right, everyone. This is the police. He 
shot Diamond, all right, Lieutenant. Put the bracelets on him, Otis. Sure. Come here, you. Not him. Put him on Diamond for disturbing the peace. Pin the medal on the other guy. No, no, no. Sure no. thing. How do you like that, wise guy? <laughs> oh, no. Rick. Oh, I'm dying. Ricky. Oh. Rick, wake up. Uh, 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 all right, all right, George, drop the gun. Rick, you've been dreaming. Huh? Oh, hello. Oh, you were having a big, fat nightmare. Oh. I came down from upstairs and you were asleep on the couch with gory detectives. Oh, well, well, I started reading some story and I got mixed up with Egyptian idols and the rubies. I got shot. That's the case of the ruby eyes. That was the craziest dream. I solved the crime and got shot six times for my trouble. Oh. Oh, Lieutenant Levinson and Otis came in and arrested me for disturbing the peace. After you were shot six times? Yeah. <laughs> Otis loved it. That wasn't in the magazine. I worked out my own ending. Move in. That's pretty. What are the lyrics? Well, uh, an awful lot of them. <laughs> I'll sing them. Okay. I'm sitting high on a hilltop. Oh, I remember that. Tossing all my troubles to the moon. It's from Thanks a Million. Where the breeze seems to say, don't you worry. With Alice Payne. Things are bound to pick up pretty soon. Here neath the sky on the hilltop, seems to me the world is all in tune. I forget all the bustle and hurry. Tossing all my troubles to the moon. I know someone will love me And everything will be just grand Just so the stars up above me Continue doing business at the same old stand It's mighty sweet in the evening When I've had a busy afternoon Sitting high, high, high on a hilltop Tossing all my troubles to the moon. Sing it again, Rick. I'm sitting high on the hill. Oh, Rick, the grouch. Yeah, listen to that. Where the breeze seems to say, don't you hey. worry. Hey. <laughs> how do you like that, wise guy? Oh, that's really awful. Yeah, well, maybe you know how I feel when you open that big bass of yours. You mean I sound like you do? Look, Diamond. What do you think the rats keep jumping out of my window for? Well, maybe if you had some plastic surgery. <laughs> and your crummy jokes are as bad as your crummy singing. So please, save the world from a horrible fate and cut your throat or something. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you, old oh, boy. Oh, I'm sitting high on a hilltop, tossing all my troubles. Hey, you! Shut up! We want to hear Diamond. Yeah, shut your big bazoo! Yeah, shut up! What's that? No, heard us. We want to hear Mr. Oh, no, no, no. Rick. Yeah, my dear public. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Peter Leeds, Yvonne Patey, Stephen Dunn, and Jack Crucian. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written and directed by Blake Edwards. Portions were transcribed. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. <laughs> now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. <laughs> What's on NBC tomorrow? Detective story fans will want to hear Madeline Carroll and Basil Rathbone in the detective melodrama, The Amazing Dr. Clitterhouse, tomorrow on Theater Guild on the Air. And for more detecting, listen tomorrow for The Adventures of Sam Spade. He'll present his most humorous caper of the season. 
Yes, you'll enjoy both Theater Guild and Sam Spade tomorrow on NBC. Next, it's Free Ride to Danger with Dorothy McGuire on NBC. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. This is a case where it didn't really matter much that uh, what happened turned out to be a dream because the cases really don't have a whole lot of uh, consequence for Diamond uh, anyway, usually. And it also got him to the uh, requested end sooner. Though in one way, the idea that Richard Diamond uh, stumbles into a fictional uh, detective story doesn't necessarily uh, come off as a brilliant because he's a fictional detective stumbling into a fit- fictional detective story and no one is really able to tell the difference or even get a hint that this is a dream because this is the sort of thing he does every week anyway also a uh, nice little back and forth with the singing critic at the end all right well now to listener comments and feedback And we have a comment from Roger regarding the $50,000 diamond heist. Roger writes, This was a great one, well written, and nobody does gumshoes like Dick Powell. Thank you, and keep up the awesome work. Well, thanks so much, Roger. Appreciate that comment on Facebook. And that'll do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie. And next Wednesday, another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at at Radio Detectives and uh